technography devices portable for your for your for codes out on the floor like in inside the room or in the pack you things like that you're probably going to use the monitors you have but just a quick rundown on capnography um, the standard capnography is what we're looking for in a patient is 35 to 45 we're looking for that nice square shaped waveform and I'm going to leave you guys a poster here so if we know what a good waveform looks like we know if we're starting to get tight airways and things like that like the shark fins of what that might look like for you guys um, when we look at our filter lines, if it's a rapid response and the patient's still spontaneously breathing, we're probably going to go on a filter line that looks like a nasal cannula right here. We'll, we'll filter, we'll look for uh, waveforms through the nasal prongs as well as the oral scoop. So if they have a deviated septum or anything like that, we'll probably pick it up the scoop, but it can alternate between the two. There's 10 holes across the top, two on the bottom for supplemental oxygen. We can provide up to five liters through here. If you need more than five liters, just slap a Vinny mask right over the top of it, non-rebreather, and continue to monitor. It takes very small traces of CO2 to register a good waveform, okay? If we move to an intubated line, it's exactly the same setup as you got. We've got one um, for the pediatric. If it's a 4.5 tube or smaller, we're gonna use this one right here. If it's larger than that, we'll, it moves to the adult size right here. The difference between the yellow and the orange is simply that the yellow ones have a, a longer life. So they have two filters on here, so these typically last 72 hours, and the orange ones last about 12 to 24 hours, okay? So to put these on, just like a nasal cannula, there's a little port on the side here, the little black port, where we're going to plug these into. When you do, what's nice about this monitor is when you turn it on, it does a zero and calibration all itself. So by the time that you turn this on and start working with the patient, you're gonna come back to this screen right here. It's ready to go. There's nothing to do but plug it in, push it through the black port, twist about half a turn, and as soon as it locks in, it's gonna start monitoring our patient. I'm gonna also put on a pulse box. It usually takes about two breaths to get um, a respiratory rate established. Are you breathing? Yeah, I'm breathing, but my pulse ox is not showing anything on a second. There we go. Okay, so we're going to get our waveform, the nice square shape that's what we're looking at. What's nice about this, it has technology to filter out snoring, crying, coughing, and things like that, so we still have an accurate respiratory rate. We'll get an entitled CO2 at the top, a respiratory rate, an SVO2, and a heart rate. We take all four of those um, to come to this main screen right here. So if we, on a standard patient, it's 35 to 45. If we look for a code situation, do you know what it should be if we're doing compressions? The American Heart Association said all codes should be run by waveform capnography. So if a standard is 35 to 45, when we're doing compressions, we want to see 12.5 or better. There's good research to show if they're for 10 and below, mortality rates about 95%. Okay? If the screen right here, the alarm silence is for two minutes. After two minutes, it resets itself. We can't turn off alarm. We can only silence it for two minutes, then it'll reset. If you get to a screen that you're not familiar with, if you hit the home screen, it'll always bring you back home. And if you have an event that you want to go back and look, if we go to menu and it allows us to go to trend, we can go back and see any data that's stored for the last 48 hours. Okay, so if there's some event that happened, you want to know what was happening between 6.30 and 7.45, we can go back and pull all that data. It'll, it'll establish that data every 30 seconds over that period of time. Okay. Any questions on capnography? Just to read, just to read. So whenever, so if we are coding somebody and they're not breathing, slap that on and put the thing over the front of it. So yeah, right. So we'll start to say maybe they're somewhat responsive, and we and we're trying to monitor right here, and they go totally unresponsive. We can leave this on. We just start bagging right over the top of it. Uh -huh. And then when they get ready to intubate, we'll pull this off, and then we'll we'll intubate, and then we'll yeah, move okay. to the okay. intubated line right here. Okay. You can go right over. You could do CPAP, go right over CPAP or something like that as well. So a long time, if we're doing procedural sedation things like that, a lot of times they move from a moderate sedation to a deep sedation. If we need to put anything right over the top, that's not a problem. Okay. 
Any questions? Just wanted you guys to be familiar with what this is. They should start uh, landing on the crash carts in the near future. They, they're in biomed now, so I suspect after education, uh, they'll probably roll out in the next week or so. Any questions? All right, guys. I